Kia ora, Year 12. Here's the second question from class today, again from the June 2022 A-Level paper. And just in case you're keeping track, which hopefully you are, it's paper 33 and it's question 10. So it looks like it's going to be quite a yucky integration by parts question, but it turns out to be pretty easy if you just spot which way around you have to go. So we've got a, um, an integral here where one of the limits of integration is a, and we're told that that constant is such that the integral of this thing here is equal to 4. So we have to show that this holds true, and you can see that we've got A on both sides of that equation, and then you know that it's going to be an iterative methods question. So I'm actually going to do all of this, um, the whole 10 marks, and show you how to make sure that you're doing this last bit properly, and showing your substitutions. Okay, so starting off with the integral, we've got the integral between A and 1 of x squared log of x dx is equal to 4. Now, we have to do IBP on this. Um, that should be pretty obvious by now. By the way, you've got a product. You haven't got one of them being the derivative of the other one, so it's not a backwards chain rule. Usually, we would think that integrating this is going to make it worse, so we wouldn't do that. But in this case, integrating this has to be done by IBP. So this is the bit that we want to either leave or differentiate, and this is the bit that we're going to integrate both times over. So getting into the integration... Um, we're going to integrate x squared and get one third x cubed, and we're going to leave the natural log and evaluate that at a and 1 minus the integral from a to 1 of one third x cubed. And this time we're going to differentiate log of x and we get 1 over x dx. Now be careful here, um, this was where a couple of you went wrong in class. You've got to remember to clean this up before you go and integrate. So x cubed over x over yeah, x cubed over x is magically, with my magic eraser, going to become x squared. Right, so that all has to equal 4. Now we've got 1 third x cubed log of x minus 1 third, so I'm now doing this integration, um, 1 third of 1 third x cubed, and that's evaluated between a and 1, and that has to equal 4. I could do things like taking through this one third and timesing it through, but I decided I would not do that and I would just get on with it. So we get one third of a cubed natural log of a minus one ninth a cubed minus this is zero because the log of one is zero plus one ninth is equal to four. Now, I can see that I've got all these ninths, so I'm going to write 4 as 36 over 9 now. I should be feeling happy because I can see now where the 35 and the 9 are coming from. So cleaning that up a little bit gives me, I'll just change pen color. So 1 third of a cubed natural log of a minus 1 ninth of a cubed is equal to 35 over 9. Look where we're trying to get to. We want to get to a is equal to this. So you can see a is equal to blah blah cube root. So we're going to make a cubed the subject. So a cubed into, let's see, we've got, uh, let's do three ninths here. I mean, obviously there are lots of ways you can do this from this point, right? You can go log of a minus, why did I do that? That was very silly. Okay, sorry guys, I'm doing this without my notes. So we've got a cubed, 3a cubed log of a on 9 minus 1 ninth of a cubed is equal to 35 over 9. Timesing everything through by 9 gives me a cubed into 3 log a minus 1 is equal to 35. So we're just about there. A cubed is equal to this. Remember it's a show that question, so do not skip steps. Finally we get what we want, which is that A is equal to all of that to the power of one third. And that's where the interesting part of the question honestly stops, but we're going to go through all of the rest. So the next bit is to say, well verify by calculation that A lies between those two values. Two ways to do that. The first way is to just work with this and show that we have, uh, at one of those values, we're going to have a less than sign, and at the other, we're going to have a greater than sign. And because the function's continuous, there must be somewhere in the middle where there's the crossover point, right? Well, the other way to do it is to set up with this notation, f of a is equal to the difference of the two sides. 
and to show that it's positive on one side and negative on the other. Now, I don't mind which way you use. They're both fine. They're both covered in the mark schedule. But in this case, I didn't do the big F of A way. I just looked at what it was on both sides. So just a little bit of communication here really helps, right? So at A equals 2.4, what have I got? Well, I've got 35 over 3 log of 2.4 minus 1 to the power of 1 third is equal to 2.781. So here I've got 2.4 is less than 2.781. Now doing it again, at A of 2.8, we get 35 over 3 log of 2.8 minus 1 to the power of a third is equal to 2.559. So here we've got 2.8 is greater than 2.559. And we need to write something out. Now, I could have typed it out nicely, but you won't have that luxury, so neither do I. So since there's a sign change, between a equals 2.4 and a equals 2.8, and the function is continuous. The root or our root, not the only one, maybe the only one here, is between these two values. And as we said back when we were learning the stuff, it's possible that there's more than one root between those two values, but we're not going to go there right now. Okay, so the next thing we've got to do is the very boring work of finding the root. And we have to take this formula, and this is um, kind of unusual. Like, usually they give you the formula, but it's really easy to see an updating formula here, right? We want to have one of these things be A of N, and one give us the rule for how to update. So we're going to make this one a n and this one a n plus one and when we've got to equilibrium or when we've got to our root those a n and a n plus one will be the same number so here's a n here's a n plus one um, i just started smack in the middle of it at 2.6 and i put in 2.6 here and then i got out this and that gave me 2.6 Five, six, seven, and it's said to take those to 4 dp. Chucking that back in gives me this. Same again, but using that number, 2.6567. I bet there's no one watching by now because these questions are so boring. But actually, there we go. So that's to 5 dp. That's all right. We can go a bit extra. Moving on with that, I'm going to take that to, to 4 dp now. It's 2.6267. And that gives me 2.6423. Now at this point I'm feeling very sick of writing all of that out. And I figure the marker has probably seen three iterations. That should be enough to just keep on going. Um, I'm sure someone out there watching will tell me if that's a bad assumption. But I've never seen you need more than three iterations in a marking schedule. So we're still not converging, right? We need to have to two decimal places be the same. Oh, hang on, that's 4, 1 there, and then we get to 2.6384, so we're still bouncing a little bit, but when we put it in this time, we end up at 2.636. So A is roughly equal to 2.64 to 2 dp. So there you go, um, nine minutes. Uh, let me know if you're still here at the end. Um, I will totally forgive you if you're not. I find this iterative method stuff some of the most boring content in the A-level course, um, but it is usually accompanied by some quite cool integration problems. I'm going to do some stats questions next because that's what we're going to look at tomorrow.